G'day guys, I've got a projectile motion question for you today where we've got a projectile that's fired along a long flat firing range with a speed of 62 and a half and an angle of 34 and a half above the horizontal and we're asked to find three different things. The maximum height reached by the projectile, the total time in the air and the total horizontal distance covered, so the range. So what I've done is I prepared earlier like this uh, vector triangle which represents um, basically the initial speed and the angle at which it's being fired from the horizontal because what we need to do in most, well most, all projectile motion questions is break up this initial speed into the horizontal and vertical components to solve each of these problems. So to find the maximum height re reached by the projectile we have to first find the vertical component of our initial velocity. So we'll start up here, let me just separate it. So let's start up here, we've got part A. So the vertical component of our initial velocity is going to be equal to, now this is the opposite side and the hypotenuse, so sine. So we're going to go 62.5 times the sine of the angle, which is 34 and a half. And we get a vertical initial velocity of 35.4 meters per second. Cool. So from here, guys, what we're going to do is we're going to um, use the fact that at its maximum height, the velocity is equal to zero. So when we have a projectile motion, the the projectile actually looks like this. So it goes up and then it comes back down again. And at this particular point here, guys, the velocity in the horizontal in sorry in the vertical direction is zero. So it goes up, it loses velocity as it's decelerating due to gravity, and then it gets to a point, and at the maximum height, its velocity is zero as it turns around and then goes back down to Earth. So what we're going to do is we're going to exploit that fact that at the maximum height the velocity is equal to zero to find the height reached above. So what we're going to do is we're going to start by using this formula, v squared equals u squared plus 2as. So this is our final velocity, which at the maximum height is zero. Our u squared is our initial velocity in the vertical direction, which is 35.4. plus 2 times and acceleration is negative 9.8 because we're going in the opposite direction to the velocity times the distance. Cool. So we can rearrange this formula and we can get that the distance is going to be equal to 35.4 squared divided by 2 times 9.8 and that's equal to 63.94 meters cool so that's part A of our question under control now what we've got to do is let's just again separate this so we can we don't run out of space Let's start part B here. So we've got part B. Now the total time in the air. So what we're going to do with this part of the question is we're going to work out how long it took to get to the top of the parabola and then we're going to double it because we are assuming that the uh, parabolic arc is symmetrical. So the time that it takes to get to the top will be exactly the same as the time that it takes to get to the bottom. And what we're going to use here, we're going to use exactly the same, we're going to exploit the exactly the same property of the maximum height, i.e. that the velocity is zero there. And we're going to use the formula V equals U plus AT. And V is zero, is equal to U, which is 35.4, 
plus negative 9.8t. So what we can do is we can rearrange this formula and we have t is equal to 35.4 divided by 9.8 which is equal to 3.63 seconds. Now that's how long it takes to get from here to here. Now like I said, we're going to assume that this is symmetrical, so that'll equal the time it takes from here to get to here. So we're going to double that 3.63, so our total time is going to be equal to 7 Point two seven seconds in the air. Cool. All right. So the last part: the total horizontal distance covered. So the range of the projectile. Now, so for C, let's just do it in a different color. I've got C. Now for the range. One of the other parts of parabolic motion, if you're not including wind resistance, is that the velocity in the horizontal direction or the horizontal component of the initial velocity never changes. So we always have a constant horizontal velocity. It's only the vertical velocity that changes due to gravity. So what we're going to do is we're going to work out to start with the horizontal component of the initial velocity, so VH. is equal to uh, 62.5 times the cosine of 34.5. In an exam, you're trying to save as much time as humanly possible. So we can do this in one step, and I don't think it's a, a too much trouble doing it in one step. So we can, this here is our velocity in the horizontal direction, and this here is equal to the time. So we can use, like I said before, let's just make it a little bit neater. Here we can use the distance is equal to the velocity average, V, and because the horizontal velocity doesn't change, that's not a very complicated thing to figure out, times the time. So in this case, if we multiply those two together, we get 374 0.22 meters and that's all she wrote. So let's just go back and figure out what we've done. So the maximum height reached by the projectile, what we have to remember there is at max, at the maximum the velocity in the vertical direction is equal to zero. That's the thing that we have to understand with that one. The total time in the air, we have to remember that these parabolic motion um, arcs are symmetrical. And the total horizontal distance covered, we have to remember that the velocity in the horizontal direction is fixed. So those are the three different things that you have to be able to remember or exploit when you're doing these problems. Other than that, it's just plugging numbers into formulas and you should be right. But again, guys, these sort of questions take a little bit of practice. This is probably one of the more simple ones. There are They do come in more complex sort of flavors and varieties, but essentially they're just a little, you know, they've got a few more unknowns that you have to solve for. But, you know, they're not too much, they don't stray from the central sort of concepts. So I'd practice on a few of the simple ones and then challenge yourselves with a few of the more complicated uh, ones where you're asked to find the uh, projection angle and all these kind of things. But until next time, guys, just keep practicing, practicing, practicing. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel. I put out new videos all the time. And 
you know, keep enjoying your physics. <laughs>